Venice truly was an amazing city. It was clear upon arrival that I had come to a type of marvel for human achievement. Not only is this city a feat of incredible engineering, but it also managed to produce and preserve the architecture and aesthetic of an era long gone. Here in the historic part of Venice, we have 55,000 people, all living on a collection of 118 islands, completely encompassed by the waters of the Venetian lagoon found at the head of the Adriatic Sea. Unfortunately, aside from rising sea levels due to climate change, the city has always had a bigger problem. It's sinking. A study conducted between the year 2000 to 2010 found the city to be sinking on average between 1 and 2 millimeters each year, which over hundreds of years can really build up. There are two main causes for the city's slow fall into the ocean, and the first one has to do with plate tectonics. You see, Venice rests atop a small tectonic plate called the Adriatic Plate, and believe it or not, this plate actually broke off from the African Plate and has been slowly smashing into the larger Eurasian Plate for the past few million years. And as the Adriatic Plate crashes into Europe, it subducts or goes beneath the Eurasian Plate. It's this process that contributes to the volcanism noted across Italy, including Mount Vesuvius, but more importantly for Venice, it also causes the plate and everything sitting on top of it to slowly lose altitude. The second cause of Venice's sinking, however, has to do with the way Venice was built. You see, like I said, before the city of Venice was constructed, settlers would have arrived to find a collection of 118 or so muddy islands stuck within a swampy lagoon, which isn't the best thing to put heavy stone buildings on top of. So, in order to create sturdy foundations on which a city could be built, the islands beneath Venice were drilled full of tree trunks. Over 10 million wooden pilings were driven into the ground here, sometimes so close that they were touching. And despite that sounding like a horrible idea, it actually wasn't. The dirt these poles were placed in was almost completely waterlogged, meaning there was little to no oxygen here to allow for decomposition to occur. As a result, these wooden beams could be covered and built on top of without the threat of them rotting. This method was so effective that, to this day, many of the original wooden beams that Venice was constructed on remain beneath the city, supporting all of the buildings and people that came much later. But as even more buildings were constructed, as even more people came to live here, and as even more time passed, the weight put on these wooden beams sitting in no more than mud only increased. And, well, this seems pretty obvious, but if you push something down in the mud, it will sink. So, while the wooden beams supporting the city are still holding up, the muddy base of Venice is slowly giving away under the weight of millions of bricks, thousands of people, and hundreds of years. So, the longer Venice stands, the more it will sink. Now, this doesn't really happen with most cities, obviously. For the most part, when choosing a place to make a city, people typically choose places with solid soil and bedrock beneath them and in locations easy to reach on foot. And well, Venice is kind of the opposite of that, built on nothing but mud in the middle of a lagoon that for most of its history required a boat to reach. Now, sometimes people are restricted by what's available to them, but in the case of Venice, less than 4 kilometers away is mainland Europe, with all of its accommodations, such as solid ground. So then this raises the question, why did the early people who settled here choose to build on the swampy islands in the middle of the lagoon instead of, you know, on the nearby coast that's perfectly suited to host a city? And well, the answer to this has to do with how the city got its start. Now, the city itself was officially founded in 421 CE, but people lived in this area much earlier. The name Venice originally comes from the Veneti tribe, who inhabited the lands around modern-day Venice in a region that is unsurprisingly known as Veneto. Before the founding of Venice, however, the region of Veneto was still a pretty populated place, with people residing in cities like the nearby Padua, as well as throughout the countryside as farmers. The Veneto region is part of what's known as the Po Valley of northern Italy, which is some of the best farmland in the entire country. And while most of the valley is guarded from outsiders by the Alps, the Veneto region lies right at the only opening to Greater Europe. So, if you were some sort of invading army that wanted to take control of the prosperous farmlands of Veneto, the Po Valley, or further, your two choices were to either cross the Alps or go through the pleasant Veneto region. So, the choice was easy, at least for most invaders anyway. Because of this, the Veneto region witnessed many invaders marching through it over the centuries. 
As early as the 2nd century CE, Germanic tribes such as the Quadi and Marcomanni invaded and destroyed many of the cities within this region. Then, around the 5th century, another Germanic tribe, this time the Visigoths, invaded through Veneto, and another 50 years after that, it was the Huns, led by Attila, who marched across Veneto on their way to the rest of the Western Roman Empire. Then, finally, by 568 CE, the Lombards, another Germanic group who originated further east, migrated nearly their entire population into the Po Valley and basically replaced a lot of people already living here. The effects of this can be seen today in the name of the region Lombardy, which is where the city of Milan is to be found. As a result of all of these invasions and migrations, many Roman cities in the region were destroyed and many Roman people were forced out of their lands, creating a refugee crisis within the Veneto region. When some of these refugees fled to the coast of the Adriatic Sea, they ended up here at the Venetian Lagoon. And it was this, the lagoon, not really the islands themselves, that attracted these refugees to build here. You see, in this location, these people who had all been recently inflicted by war found something that none of their other cities had. Natural defenses. The islands in the middle of the Venetian lagoon were, well, just that, islands in the middle of a lagoon. A place invaders could not reach unless they had boats, which, well, they usually didn't. The same way that castles of medieval times had moats to protect them from invading armies, these islands had an entire lagoon protecting them. They didn't need to construct walls or towers to defend it, they just needed to make these islands habitable and the fact that they were islands would do the rest. So that's what they did, driving wooden pylons into the muddy islands creating the foundations for a city. So that explains why people built Venice, but it also explains how Venice became what it is today. You see, while the city was built by necessity, the protection provided by the lagoon also allowed trade to flow through it without the worry of attack and plundering. After the Roman Empire had fully collapsed due to invaders and internal pressures, Venice remained a prosperous center of trade. Even as all of Europe fell into the medieval period, Venice commanded trade throughout the Mediterranean. Soon, the Republic of Venice was established and this small city came to control not only the trade but also territories throughout the Mediterranean. At its territorial maximum, the Venetian trade empire owned or controlled a large part of the Po Valley in Italy and territories throughout the Adriatic all the way to Greece. Here they controlled the entire lower half called the Peloponnesus as well as Attica where Athens is. They also controlled the Greek islands like Crete and Cyprus as well as most of the smaller ones as well. The Venetian holdings even went as far as Turkey and Crimea. Venetians started off in the salt trade, as the surrounding lagoon was shallow and flat, creating the optimal conditions for salt works. Quickly, the city was extracting salt from the ocean and exporting it to the region, into the Po Valley, and beyond. By the 13th century, Venice had reached its economic peak and had expanded to command the spice trade from India through Arabia to Europe, becoming the major port of entry for spices into the continent. Venice had become so powerful that it made and held exclusive trade agreements along all of its trade routes, making it nearly impossible for anyone else to bring spices into Europe. In order to open up a spice trade of their own, nations like Spain and Portugal needed to seek out much longer ways of getting to India that weren't controlled by Venice. Usually they looked for this route on boats, an endeavor which eventually resulted in the European discovery of the Americas. Essentially, the Republic of Venice had become as economically powerful as an entire European nation, and the city of Venice was at the center of it. The enormous amount of wealth that entered the city through this trade is what allowed it to grow and beautify, giving us the spectacular city we know today. Ironically, nowadays, because of its architecture and beauty, the city that was built to keep outsiders, well, out, does the exact opposite and attracts millions of outsiders each year, now in the form of tourists. So, so many tourists. Even still, Venice was an amazing city to visit and a real lesson on how giving refugees a safe place to live can benefit everyone and create an economic boon for an area. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like travel videos like this, go over to my Patreon where I'm working on a travel budget for this channel to let me go out and do more videos like this. A special thanks to my patrons who already contributed. The trip where I learned all this was made possible by you guys. Of course, subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this and maybe check out the other video I made about Europe so far. The link should be somewhere on screen. I'll be back soon with another one. Thanks.